Saxon Algebra 1, Lesson 16, one topic. We're going to do some more of those evaluation problems like we did, uh, I don't know, when was it? A couple lessons back. I promise you that this will not be a monster one topic lesson like that surface area one was where we took us 10 years to do three problems. This is going to be much better, shorter and sweeter, although it is a step up in complexity from what we were doing. It's lesson 14. I remember now. So let's see how these problems have gotten a little bit crazier. Again, the problem tells us to evaluate and then it gives us a long expression with letters, parentheses, brackets, you name it. And then it tells us that P equals minus two and A equals minus four. This is how I want you to set these problems up. I want you to make them as neat as you can, but write the expression first with the letters, write the values over here that we're plugging in, then we're gonna write this again with a bucket for every letter. There's the big parentheses. Okay, the square ones are not as much of a problem because we're not adding any of those. It's the, the buckets and the original parentheses that can get confusing. So just exaggerate these. Or, you know, if you want to get fancy and use a different color, I'm 100% on board with that. Just make sure that you don't skip the step of using buckets, though. And if doing it all in pencil or whatever you use, just using one writing implement, that's fine. We don't have to make this crazy. But make sure you use the buckets because look at our values. P, there's only one P, it's right here. And then these three are all. But look at all the minus signs flying around here. Okay, so we have to evaluate carefully. We have to set up carefully and we have to evaluate carefully. So we've set up. I'm thinking that's pretty good. Let's deal with what's inside here. We go to the belly of the beast, right? And we do the work inside the parenthesis, the main parentheses, not our little buckets. Minus two plus four. So we're on the ladder. We're at minus two and we go up four toward the sun. Okay, that's good news. That gets us up into the positives. And then we're gonna multiply that I'm going to clean up these two minuses. That becomes positive four. And I'm going to write the whole problem again. I'm going to simplify that as well. But suddenly, I'm feeling a whole lot better about this problem, aren't you? Because it's just four times four times two. That much is eight, eight times, no, that's 16. Oops, 16 times two equals 32. Yeah, that's the right answer. Sorry. My brain went sideways for just a second. Okay. Makes sense. That four times four, four plus four, that was shameful. All right. So it was a little messier. Lots of negative signs flying around. Let's try one more. There are only, I think, three of these. Yeah, there's three and that's it. All right. Here comes another one. Again, the instructions say evaluate. Carefully copy it down and then A equals minus two and P, no, X equals minus six. We had a P in the last one. All right. Checking, notice that in all of these problems, all of the values we're filling in are gonna be negative numbers. All right, bucket time. Okay. So the darker ones are those little guys. All right, A is equal to minus two. So it goes here and it goes there and it goes there. And X is minus six, it goes there and it goes there. All right, now we see once again that 
We go to the, the innermost parentheses first. We do that work first, and then it just turns into multiplication, so it, its order of operations is not a big deal after that. If we had some addition or subtraction mixed in, then we'd have to be a lot more careful. Okay, so I'm gonna start here. Minus two plus six. Okay, that's positive four. And then let's clean up this other stuff. That becomes a positive two. And then these two, uh, I'm gonna leave as they are. Okay, so now we wanna do, first we did this work inside the parentheses. Now we're gonna do this work inside the brackets. So we have minus two times minus six times eight. This, and now we can just multiply straight through because we are, um, we're just multiplying order, doesn't matter. Positive 12 is those two times eight equals, that is what, 96. Right answer, yay. All right, and now for the last one, 16.3, this one's the longest one yet. Look at all the minuses. Oh my gosh. It's like a minefield, isn't it? This, this one is right up against there. I didn't forget anything. It just left a little gap. Okay, and our values are minus four and minus six. That's what makes these problems more difficult. Um, and that is technically the name of this is more complicated. I didn't think that I needed to use such a threatening title. Uh, but that's why they are more complicated is because there's lots of minus signs here and all the plug-in values are minus signs. Okay, copying. Oh wait. I was making a mess. It wasn't right. Okay. It's really hard to do this carefully, you guys. It's so easy to make a mistake. Minus B square guy minus B parenthesis B minus C close minus open C minus B close close. Okay, ready? B's are minus four. It goes here, 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 here. And then the C's go, isn't that horrifying? What a catastrophe, what a outrageous mess that is. And it's way down here at the bottom of the page too. All right, I'm gonna do the work in parentheses. Oh, but again, I see it's not horrible. I'm gonna do the work in parentheses and I'm gonna make a note of it up here. Okay, minus four, plus six is positive two. Minus six plus four is negative two. All right. Uh, I'm going to use a scrap of paper so I don't have to turn the page now because I didn't know this problem would be such an unruly beast. So I'm going to slide my book up a little bit you can still see the problem. Okay, and then I'm gonna continue working 
down below, I have this very attractive scrap of paper that will allow us to forge ahead. Okay, so now I'm gonna copy and I'm gonna just simplify these negative signs as we go. So on the outside I have four, square bracket, then four, parentheses, this one is positive two, this one's negative two, close, and bracket. Okay, so, now I'm still working within these brackets. I'm ignoring this guy on the outside. And now I'm going to do, so I'm working within, and I know I need to do this multiplication before I do that subtraction. So the four on the outside stays the same. This becomes eight. This becomes plus, this becomes two. Now I can actually do the addition again because we're inside the parentheses. Now I finally have that whole parenthesis thing chopped down to one and now I can multiply and my final answer is 40. That's the right answer. So moral of the story is these take a little bit of work. You notice that I didn't try to carry too much of this in my head. Some students think it's easier not to write it down and they try to carry a lot of these numbers in their heads. Um, at some point, your head's gonna explode and I don't wanna be there to see it happen. Um, speaking of which, I was cleaning out my attic this weekend and I found um, a box of the senior pictures I had of my friends who graduated. You know, when we graduated, you get a, uh, you get senior pictures done and the wallet size pictures that were about like this big, you would trade them with each other. And I found a senior picture of my friend whose name was Vince Vitale and his dad owned a produce company um, in Detroit. I grew up in Michigan. And one day when Vince Vitale was 16 or 17 years old, he was driving one of his dad's work trucks full of watermelons. It was like an open bed truck but a big one. He was driving it on the expressway and he got in an accident, not his fault, and he, is, he rolled the truck full of watermelons and there were watermelons all over the interstate and they had to shut down like the equivalent of I-5 um, for hours while they cleaned up his watermelon mess. And he said it was an amazing experience. He was pretty, I mean, his dad wasn't happy, but it wasn't his fault. Um, but it was quite a story. So what does that have to do with anything here? Um, be careful because these problems can make a mess. I think that's what I was saying. Um, but there you have it. My friend rolled a truck full of watermelons and lived to tell the tale. So you will live to tell the tale of these problems as well. We're done. Lesson 16 is finished. Yay. Goodbye.